רוצה לאבד. תסתובבי. לאט יותר. לכי קדימה. עצרי. קרוב. קרוב יותר. אחורה. שימי אותי במקום. נפלא, מאוד חיה את. תראי לי איך אני נראית. את רוצה לגעת בי? תודה. So my name is Maya Magnat, and uh, Ruti said it uh, better than me, so I'll just continue. Um, as a part of uh, the, practical, the practical submissions I had in the last uh, three years, I have worked on technology integrated theater and performance project. Um, and I'll show you some examples. Okay. Uh, like a 48 hours documentary Facebook project, and a nostalgic Google Street View tour. The scene you have just watched is a part of my final project, Interfacing, staged last January at my university, and reflecting my theoretical and practical interest in digital media, theater and performance, as well as in po post-humanism. Uh, interfacing is my attempt to engage with the relationship between people and digital devices. The technology, as, have, as you have just seen, is represented by a video recording of my lips. In order to bring our relationship on stage, I have chosen to anthropomorphize uh, technology and create a character with whom I interact. Uh, at the beginning of the show, we have a professional relationship where she gives me instructions. The relationship gradually takes on an intimate and sexual nature as she asks me to touch her. By the, by the end, we unite to form a third entity out of the connection between the live and recorded personas. Steve Dixon, professor of performance studies and media, coined the term digital performance and defines it to include all performance works in which computer technologies play a key role as far as content, techniques, aesthetics, or delivery forms. Greg Giskem defines intermedia theater in which, uh, in which extensive interaction between performers and media can be found, 
where neither the live nor recorder material can make much sense without the other, uh, where interaction modifies how the respective media conventionally functions, inviting reflection upon their nature and methods. Another tem term I would like to, to use is Jennifer Parker Starbucks Cyborg Theatre, combining the live performer's body with the digital, technological and medial images in order to reimagine the human subject. Cyborg Theatre raises questions about what it means to be a human being in a digital age and provides a rehearsal stage for the possibilities of the post-human uh, future with the fears it stirs within. We are examples. <laughs> we are accustomed to see ourselves as the ones who control the technologies we employ. The role reversal between the device and me and interfacing exposes the power exchange relationship that we neglect to notice in everyday life. In her book, Alone Together, Sherry Turkle warns us against the holding power of new technologies. Some people find computers so compelling that they do not want to be separated from them. Turkle is worried that losing oneself in worlds within the machine would, dis would distract us from facing our problems in the, real in the real world. She says that we are tempted by technology because we are lonely, yet afraid of intimacy. And digital communication offers us company without demands. From early as the 1970s, Marshall McLuhan, in his book Understanding Media, has too been warning against the tight connection to technology, saying that men are fascinated by any extension of themselves in any material, in any material other than themselves. <laughs> McLuhan uses the myth of Narcissus and says that Narcissus falls in love with his own reflection in the water, lapsing into a state of narcosis. Having adapted to his extension of himself, he becomes a closed system. In interfacing, I criticize the violent act of controlling and being controlled by devices, trying to expose this absurd and distorted situation. On the other hand, there are romantic and intimate moments that show this, uh, this kind of connection is possible, if only as my wishful thought. During the show, I try to examine the different connection, not only between technology and me, but also between technology and the audience. The audience is using laptop computers. They play a computer game, uh, interact with the technology lips, as you have just seen with Freddy here, and uh, use their smartphones. Uh, through their participation, they become a part of the show. The, the audience, unlike me, have the choice of reacting to technology as they see fit. Will they connect or try to disconnect? Giscombe claims that the use of digital media on stage can spur a more critical approach to the part of the audience. He says viewers will mostly be more active at an intermedia performance than when watching a movie, for example. And that intermedia performance creates a chance for critical viewing of digital media. Examples. During the show, I, the live performer, shared the stage with two digital doubles, recorded performers. The technology is represented by a video projection of the lips, as, as well as my digital avatar, uh, gen generated through The Sims computer game animation, as you can see here. Um, during the show, uh, interaction is established between the doubles and the audience as the lips flirt with them and the audience is welcome to play the computer game and activate my avatar. The digital double, according to Dixon, features in various categories of the digital performance, with every category exploring different representation and topics. I chose to focus on three of those. The double is reflection. Reflections undergoing digital change uh, constitute a dialogue between the self and the world beyond. The digital echo allows us to explore, ask questions, and alter this image. For instance, um, you have just seen at the start of my presentation the mirror scene between the lips and me, where I imitate their gestures. The double is an alter ego. 
an, an alternative to the performer's personality and a darker embodiment thereof. The lips are my, are my alter ego as a performer, and I chose them as representation as I find them to symbolize technology. At once tempting, se sexy, sensual, and scary or repelling. The double as manipulable mannequin. Graphic, re graphic representation of the human body in the virtual world. I created my computerized avatar as to guide the audience through the virtual world and, to order, and in order to further emphasize the control relationship when operated by the users and the audience. The moment when a flesh and blood actor faces uh, his medial other, um, sorry, the moment when a flesh and blood actor faces his medial other engages uh, Matthew Cosi in his article, The Screen Test of the Double. Cosi explains Freud's concept and argues that the experience of the self in technological space can be read as an uncanny experience. For example, recognizing the self outside oneself through the voice echoing on the phone, uh, a TV projection in slow motion, etc. The lips and avatar are arcane in nature, expropriating something from life and transforming it. The lips are an expropriated body part that underwent augmentation and digital alternation. The avatar is my mirror image, expropriated and used. Both are human-like items that have undergone defamilization. <laughs> According to Kazi, the screens are uh, the technology we use to think of ourselves anew and view ourselves as we are. The uncanny, when featuring in a digital performance, offers more than a, few uh, than a new aesthetic. It proposes a way of thinking about uh, change, the change experienced by Western subjectivity due to mediality. Throughout the performance, I employ projection, tablet, and computer screens to offer a new perspective on my identity and thereby construct a new one instead. As the performance draws to an end, I peel off my skin as an image for the metamorphosis I undergo in order to connect with technology and become one with it. Following my connection with technology, my body remains still on the table. Is it still my body? Is it an empty shell now? Dixon relates the issue of the body in the digital performance to the Cartesian split. He explained that the philosoph philosoph philosophic principle of the body as a prison of the soul dominated Western thought for hundreds of years and is now celebrating a renaissance in cyber culture and academic discourse into digital art. W uh, watching screens and monitors, we increasingly become bodiless in the mental sense uh, of the word, though not physically speaking. Dixon makes it clear that, uh, contrary to current view, the digital performance makers do not believe the performer's virtual body to be less authentic than the flesh and blood one, or detached uh, from the performer. On the contrary, artists' exploration of the relations between the virtual and the physical can help fight the disembodiment myth. Take, for instance, performer, choreographer, and philosopher Suzanne Cozel, who has re researched the relations between the physical body and its virtual double at the show Telematic Dreaming. During the show, Cosell lay on a bed in one room with the audience lying on another bed in another room and their respective picture were broadcast to one another so they could uh, communicate via video through movement. And Cosell describes a constant shift between a sense of separation on the one hand and union on the other, of losing and then remembering her body. She stresses that the experience she had, though constituting no substitute for actual similar ones, were nonetheless uncomprisingly palatable, and notes that uh, at times the virtual may be more concrete than the physical moment. According to Cosell, popular belief has it that the virtual reality demonstrates the futility of the body, but for her, the experience was that of a body being extended rather than lost or replaced. 
At uh, the end of my performance, when a union occurs between me and the technology, the voice disappears and the lips are gone, leaving my body lying and unresponsive, staring at the ceiling. It was my conscious decision not to disappear at this moment, but rather to leave my body present in the room, bare and very close to the audience. Um, in its first version, my performance had a completely different end to it. The original end had me rescued from the, me from the medial world. It was only after being exposed to the post-humanist uh, feminist theory that I could conceive of a possible different end. Donna Haraway, one of the leading minds of cyber feminism, writes in her renowned Cyborg Manifesto about the connection between machine and men. Haraway argues that nowadays we are all cyborgs, machine and organism combined. For Haraway, the cyborg is an image that forms a prospect for historic change. A cyborg would, uh, world can refer to a physical and social reality where people are neither apprehensive about the proximity of animals and machines, nor, nor anxious about partial identities and conflicting reference points. Catherine Hales, literary, sci scientific, and technological researcher, and Rosie Braidotti, philosopher and feminism and gender theoretician, pursue Haraway's political social discussion. According to Hales and Braidotti, the, the post-humanist subject is an entity whose boundaries are under constant reconstruction. Hales offer, offers an unapocalyptic vision of post-humanism, whereby humans may enter a symbiotic relationship with machines and possibly be replaced by them, but may only connect with machines to a certain extent, as our experiences are body and matter-based. Braidotti's posthumanist vision deals with subject that is no longer placed in a dualistic framework, but rather relates to many others and unites with technology. These are radical relations, giving rise to new forms of subjectivity and uh, main maintaining ethics of codependence between the species. For Hills and Braidotti, posthumanism offers a way out from old frameworks and opens new ways of thinking about what it means to be a human being and how this change in think and how this change in thinking may affect society. <laughs> okay, so I can I just say uh, the conclusion? <laughs> okay. Uh, my theoretical study into the posthumanism feminism theory uh, guided me along this, the work of my, on my performance. I tried to communicate both alternatives that I feel it poses for us. A warning against post-apocalyptic posthumanism on the one hand and the possibilities embodied in posthumanism on the other. These, dialectic, these dialectics relate to my posthumanist uh, analysis of the McLuhan-inspired narcissist myth. Narcissus fell in love with the reflection of his likeness in digital technology. Having yearned for his reflection to death, Narcissus metamorphosed into a flower. In my interpretation, the, encounters w the, in the encounter with technology, identifying oneself within it and falling in love with a digital double, may cause transformation, creating a new post-humanist subject. The, perform the performance concludes with the moment of union, shared by technology and me, and the creation of the new subject. What is it going to be? How should it look like or behave? I shall leave these questions for my next work. <laughs>